evening, everyone, and thank you. Thank you so much for joining us for Teaching Women this morning. We have Professor Emma Owo Ajay, and she'll be taking us on commissioned and commissioned. Father, we just want to thank you for a new year. We just want to really thank you for the freshness. Thank you for how amazing it has been so far. We ask in the name of Jesus that as it is on the as it is a new day, you know, in the chronological calendar, that we have fresh um, strength, fresh vigor, fresh words to ride on in this new year. In Jesus' name, we ask that um, you'd um, give us um, hearing hearts, you know, to be able to see what you want us to hear this morning. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Mm -hmm. All right, Auntie, take it away. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'd like to thank Papa Yanni for <laughs> drawing me out to give this message. And I think it's a real privilege to start at the beginning of the year. As I was um, telling PU, uh, I'm the new kid on the block. So it's an honor, really, because sometimes you're not sure who is who. And, you know, you don't want people just coming to speak anything. But I really appreciate this honor. So I'm going to be talking about commission being commissioned and they're also being commissioned um as we go along you will understand why these two have been put together it's something that um, the holy spirit has been putting on my mind for some time and um yeah so enjoy as we go along you can make some notes there are lots of scriptures um because that explains what we are talking about so basically, um, as an introduction, we must be conscious of whose we are, who we are, and what we have been spent, sent to do. Um, I think sometimes in the whole journey of Christianity, we get into church, we get born again, we're excited, then we get into church, we get into the routine, and we feel, oh, I'm going to church, I'm doing what I'm supposed to do, I can speak the language, I'm praying in tongues, whatever. And we get lost, we forget, whose we are really. We begin to be more conformed to the image of our churches or the image of the leaders rather than being conformed to the image of God and remembering that we are really God's children. I think this is one of the great things I learned from the whole HTP course, not really learned, but it, it reinforced it in my mind and bringing that consciousness into my mind. And then who we are, who God has created us to be. Uh, back again to the church scene, it's easy to get lost and forget that we are created for greatness. We're not created for routine. We are created for greatness. We are created to send forth the light to different places. We are all ministers. The fivefold ministry has been uh, was established so that we can be equipped to do the work of the ministry. So it's important to remember who we are, um, who we are and what we have been sent to do. We're not people who have been randomly placed on the earth without purpose. It's we are here for a purpose and we must continually ask God, the Father and the Holy Spirit that what, what do you want me to do? Why am I here on the earth at this time? There can be a broad strategy. And then also there can be like this year as we've entered into 2023, Lord, what do you want me to do? What is your word for me in 2023? Yes, there are many words going around, but for me in 2023, what do you have for me to do? And then also on a daily basis, what do you have for me to do? So it's, it's a dynamic relationship. It's an adventure. We should never get stuck in one place. And then we are on earth at this point in time on purpose. So what is the Lord doing and how can we engage in that? So we have been commissioned. There's a general commissioning overall, and then there's a short-term commissioning. So what's that commissioning? Um, Mark 16, 15 to 18 says, and he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. These signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they shall cast out demons. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. So we have that 
overall commissioning, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all, to every creature. So everywhere we go, there's that constant thing of we need to preach the gospel. And then we're not just sent like that. We have tools, as it were. We have the various signs that will follow us. We're people that are empowered. We'll still talk about that. And we can um, cast out demons. We can speak in new tongues. We can take up serpents and stuff. So we don't have to run to our pastors or our leaders to come and say, oh, please pray for this person. No, we are in charge and we are the people that can do these things. So also uh, other commissioning is that Jesus um, in John 17, 18 said, I have commissioned them to represent you as you commissioned me to represent you. Um, some other translations say, the same way that you have sent me, I have sent them. So we have been commissioned just like Jesus. And then uh, Matthew 10, seven to eight, the TPT version says, as you go, preach the, this message. So there's an essence of movement. We're not just supposed to sit in our churches, the four walls of our churches. We're supposed to go. We're supposed to be in, there's the momentum that we keep on going with. And this is the message. Heaven's kingdom's realm is accessible. It's nearby, close enough to touch. You must continually bring healing to lepers and to those who are sick and make it your habit to break off the demonic presence from people and raise the dead back to life. It just seems amazing. Can we do all these things? Yes, we can. And then freely, have you received the power of the kingdom? So freely release it to others. So in other words, there's, there's a mandate for us. We must release the power of God that is in us. Then Matthew um, 28, 18 to 20 says, and Jesus came and spoke to them saying, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all the things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. So apart from preaching the gospel, we also have to make disciples. We have to teach people things. It's not just, oh, I got the person born again. But then we have to disciple the nations as well. So this is very important. I hope you can hear me. And are you yes. still with me? Yes, please. Yes, please. We hear you clearly. Okay. Yes. Right. So, yeah. Okay. So who are we? We are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people that we may oh, that you may proclaim the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. I mean, that sounds so beautiful. And these are things that we have to remind ourselves constantly, even as we enter into 2023. It's like, I'm just not somebody that is passing by here with no purpose. No, I didn't just walk out come. I am here on purpose. And I am part of a holy nation. I'm part of a royal priesthood. We are salt. We give flavor to our environment. We dispel. We are light. Sorry. That we are light and we dispel the darkness. So um, Matthew 15, 13 to 16 says, let me tell you who, who, um, why you're here. You're here to be the salt seasoning that brings out the God flavors of, of this earth. If you lose your saltiness, how will people taste godliness. You've, you've lost your usefulness and will end up in the garbage. Here's another way of putting it. You're here to be the light, bringing out the God colors in the world. God is not a secret to be kept. You're going public with this, as public as a city on a hill. If I make you light bearers, you don't think I'm going to hide you under the bucket, do you? I'm putting you on a light stand. Now that I've put you on that, on a hilltop, on a light sign, shine, keep an open house, be generous with your lives. By opening up to others, you prompt people to open up with God, this generous father in heaven. It's a lot. I mean, can you imagine those beautiful, like the seasoning of salt? You know, when if a meal is saltless, we all know that we don't want to eat that meal. 
if our Christianity is thoughtless, nobody wants to come near us. But really, God has put us here to, in a way, you know, salt attracts, even in terms of osmosis, it attracts water. If our lives show forth the goodness of God, we attract people. And then, you know, we are useful um, members of the kingdom. And then even the whole part of God's colors. I mean, when we think of colors, we think of the rainbow. Are we colorful with our Christianity? And where have we kept our Christianity? Is it in the four walls of our church and within our houses? Or have we gone public with it? God says that we're supposed to be a city on a hill. We're supposed to be a light. We're not to blind people with our light, but we're supposed to show people that we are the light in this dark generation. So it's very important for us to keep a hold on this and know that we shine the light to others. And this is what we are called to do. So we're commissioned. And even as Jesus said um, in Matthew eleven twenty-eight 28 to 29, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. Um, sorry, that, that's um, Luke 4, 18. And then the other part is that, are you weary carrying a heavy burden? Come to me, I'll refresh your life for I am on a, your oasis. Simply join my life, your life with mine. Learn my ways and you'll discover my gentle, humble. And you'll discover that I'm gentle, humble, and easy to please. You'll find refreshing arrest in me. So the thing is that we are doing this together, not alone. Please give me a minute. Let me just plug my laptop. It's going to be awesome. Okay, I'm good. So... And yes. please, you have to unmute. I use the time. Yes, to, I'm yes. yes, I'm going yeah. to. Yes, that's fine. So we do, we are commissioned, we are commissioned, as it were, sorry, with the Holy Spirit. We walk with the Holy Spirit and we walk with Christ. So, you know, quite often people say, I can't do this. You know, I'm nervous. I'm scared. I am this. It's not about you. It's about you connecting with the Holy Spirit and letting the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God work through us. So, you know, I love this passage. Um, we have an adventurous life. This life is in us. When we got born again, we received this life from God. So this resurrection life we have received from God is not a timid, grave tending life. We're not supposed to be in a corner afraid somewhere. It's an adventurous, expectant, uh, expectant greeting with a uh, greeting God with a child like, "What's next, Papa?" Can you imagine? You know, like you have children, or you have your nieces and nephews, and they come near you, and it's like, okay, and they know that ah, this auntie or uncle, there's always something happening. It's like, okay, or oh, daddy, what's next? What's next? You know, we have to have that adventure. You get up in the morning, and it's like you pray, and it's like, Lord, Father God, what are we doing today? You know, um, one of the prophets, Lana Vossa, she said, she, you know, we should have coffee with Jesus. And she'll say, OK, what's on your mind today? That should be the way we operate. It's not about, you know, just going there, just going out there in the world. It's a, a co-missioning with God. We're together in this. So God touches our spirits and confirms who we really are. We know who he is and we know who we are, father and children. And we know we are going to get what's coming to us, an unbelievable inheritance. We go through exactly what Christ goes through. And if we go through the hard times with him, then we'll certainly go through the good times with him. I know the past few years have been, three years or so have been tough for everybody. But as Christ went through trials and tribulations and came out glorified, we are coming out and we're coming out in this year with much more glory. So we are equipped, you know, we're definitely equipped. And I love the way that um, the TPT puts this part, this particular passage, uh, Matthew 
3.11. It says, those who repent, I baptize with water. But there's coming a man after who is, after me, who is more powerful than I. In fact, I'm not even worthy enough to pick up his sandals. He will submerge you into union with the, holy, the spirit of holiness and with raging fire. Do we still feel that raging fire? Or is it like, oh, I've been born again. Like for me, I've been born again for over three decades. <laughs> and it's like, how do we keep that fire raging? But the fact is that we are in union with the spirit of holiness and we are baptized with a raging fire. Then um, Acts 1.8, it says, but I promise you this, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and you will be seized with power. You will be my messengers to Jerusalem, throughout Judea, the distant provinces, even to the remotest places of the world. So for those of us that love to travel like me, this is very, very exciting because I get to travel and I get to preach the gospel as I go along. More power. But you shall receive power, ability, efficiency, and might when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you should be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria to the ends of the world, just the Amplified Version. And just to let us know that it's not by our strength, it's by the strength of God. It's not in your own strength, for it is God who is all the while effectually at work in you, energizing and creating in you the power and the desire, both to will and to work for his good pleasure and satisfaction and delight. So what does this say? You know, sometimes you get a prompting, talk to this person. Sometimes it's, oh, pray for this person. So it's the Holy Spirit, you know, um, P, you mentioned last week about the whispers of God. Do we hear the whispers? of God? Do we, uh, do we respond to the whispers of God? It's extremely important. And we, when we know that we, it's in union with the Holy Spirit, we are collaborating. We, and he will prompt us, okay, talk to this particular person. Recently, I, I went to renew my passport and I, you know, those passport offices can be crazy. You know, and then we're all, you know, kind of like sitting together, you know, very like almost like sardines. And I was beside this young lady that's a youth copper. And I just felt the Holy Spirit say, talk to her. And I was like, oh, Lord. <laughs> but then I, you know, I just said, oh, hello, how are you? And, you know, asked her her name and we started talking. And, you know, we struck up a conversation. And, you know, she's transitioning between youth service and her next level, not sure what to do. So I, you know, I kind of like counseled her, spoke with her for a while. And I felt that the Holy Spirit was saying, okay, ask her for her number. And I was like, mm, you know, sometimes my own is too much. I'm such a, I can be such an extrovert. But interestingly enough, the young lady now said to me, please, Mark, can I have your number? <laughs> so it's like, hey, the Holy Spirit was like, you see yourself, you didn't want to do this. But, uh, you know, I, I, I've prompted her. And, you know, we've exchanged numbers and we'll continue the conversation. Um. Okay, um, then looking at Jude one twenty, how do we continue to energize ourselves? It's not in our own strength, but for it is God who's, okay, sorry, there was a repetition of this slide. Jude one twenty. but you beloved, build up yourselves, founded in your most holy faith, make progress, rise like an edifice, higher and higher. You know, um, a lot of us, a lot of the young men go to the gym and they build themselves up. You can see those muscles. They're rip ripping and have our six packs in the spiritual realm. How many of us, you know, look like, you know, that we have built up ourselves and we need to ex exercise ourselves in the Holy Spirit. We need to be praying in the Holy Spirit. So who are we also? Superheroes. We are the original superheroes supermen and women that people would like to talk to. Um, I don't know how, how many of you, I remember my, my son when he was younger, he's um, in his um, mid twenties now, he loved Ben 10. You know, I don't know whether how many of you watched it. If you watch Ben 10, kind of like raise up your hand. I don't know. 
if, if you have, if you might not, if you haven't, you might not understand what I'm talking about. Can you use the raise up hand emoji? Okay. So anyway, Ben 10 basically was this, you know, young boy that had superpowers. And when something happened, he would just get into, you know, he would get into a small space and then he would press something that was the matrix and then he would change into whatever he was supposed to be. And that's the way we are, really. When there's, when there's something that happens and we're challenged or other people are challenged, we can just unite with the Holy Spirit. You know, the song Waymaker, Miracle Worker, Promise Keeper, Light in the Darkness, that is who you are. You know that that Waymaker lives in us and really that's who we are. We can be Waymakers. People come to us and say, I, we're not sure what to do. We don't, we are confused. How do we manage this problem in our workplace, in our families? You can be that person that makes a way. There might even making a way for people to get their fees paid, making a way in terms of people getting healing. So the other thing is that there's so much of the occult and um, magic and um, astrology that's going on in the, in the world. We have the power. How comes we don't display it? We're not bold about it. You travel nowadays, you go to the bookshops, you see witchcraft books, occult books, various things, Satanism openly displayed. But we don't, we, the, the church is not out there as much as we should be with the power of God. People need to know that God is powerful. People need to know that God loves them. Yes, we've done a lot with HTP. We've done a lot with um, the kingdom community nation. But how do we press in? How do we make keep the word out there? And, you know, people need the presence of God, not necessarily our religion or doctrine. I remember I was in the UK with some friends um, last year on holiday. And, you know, I came downstairs and you know, the lady I was with was complaining about her work and everything. And they're believers, but not yet deep believers. So, you know, the Holy Spirit said, pray for her. And I was like, mm, okay. So I, I just prayed with them and the presence of God was there. And, you know, it, they felt so lightened after that. And, you know, as I was going upstairs, the Holy Spirit said, you know what? People don't need your religion or, or your doctrine. What they need is the manifestation of my presence. And when we pray for people, when we release the presence of God, people can feel that and people know. And I, this is a, um, a phrase by Bill Johnson that P.U. often says, is that we owe the world an encounter. So if we owe the world an encounter, are we going around, you know, like a salt shaker sprinkling the presence of God, or are we just in that salt shaker and we are like a block? So there's something that the Lord said to me. I just have this thing about Abba speaks. It's like partner, partner with me to dispense what each person needs. Ask me and I will tell you, don't try to do it by yourself. Let's partner together to show the world my love, power and kindness. And then another thing he said, he said, I'm seeking true worshipers who worship me in spirit and in truth. As they go in my presence, as they stay in my presence, I will pour out my spirit and my spirit will overshadow them and fill them. And they will be carriers of my glory, dispensing it to those around them and those they encounter. So this is, you know, when we pray, it's, you know, it's like when we get into our prayer closets, we are actually kind of like drawing in the presence of God that we can afterwards go out and release. So what are we supposed to do? Arise, shine, arise from the depression and prostration in which circumstances have kept you, rise to a new life. Definitely COVID and other things. And then the whole atmosphere of the world that is, it seems so dark has kept us, you know, rather depressed and prostrated in some occasions. But we need to shine and be radiant with the glory of God for our light has come. Our light is constantly coming. Every day we receive the light of God and the glory of the Lord is risen upon us. For behold, gross darkness shall cover the earth 
and dense darkness all the peoples. But the Lord shall arise upon you, O Jerusalem, and his glory will be seen upon you. So I'm sure you'll all agree that there's gross darkness in the world. There's no gain saying about that. The heaviness in the air, every, all of us feel it. They're just sometimes, you know, and a lot of the young people, people are just like, they, they are you hear of people that are apparent, seem apparently happy and they go and they commit suicide. It's a spirit. It's, you know, it's something, it's a shadow of darkness that the enemy has cast over the earth. And even the whole gender identity, the confusion, you know, there's so much darkness, but we have the opportunity to arise and shine in this season. So we are carriers. We're carriers of fire. We're carriers of glory. We're carriers of power. We're carriers of love. We're clothed with glory and we're filled with glory. It's important to remember that. Glory, glory, glory. I've just been hearing glory, glory. I mean, since December or so, when I, I say to the Lord, what are you saying? It's like glory, glory. You know, I keep on hearing that. And I believe that the Lord is releasing his glory upon us in this season. And Colossians 1.27 says, living with, within you is the Christ who floods you with the expectance or expectation of glory. This is the mystery of Christ embedded within us, becomes a holy treasure chest of hope filled with the riches of glory for his people. And God wants everyone to know it. So we have this treasure chest. What are we going to do with it? Are we going to keep on opening it and feeling happy? I have this treasure chest. Are we going to share the good news with other people? Are we going to continually ensure that we're empowered? How do we ensure that this glory is upon us? A daily prayer life is imperative. If it's never been before, even the more so, as we've mentioned before, there's so much darkness around us. Sometimes I hear people say, oh, I couldn't pray. I couldn't pray. But you can't talk. You know, the enemy definitely attacks our prayer life. But how do we, you know, it's like prayer is our oxygen. Is there any day that we go without brushing our teeth? Do, is there any day that we go without eating? Is there any day that we go without talking to people? Prayer is not so much that, oh, praise and worship, um, you know, um, supplication, thanksgiving, this. Prayer is communication with God. So if we say we didn't pray, that means that we didn't talk to our father. If we're living in the same house with our father and we love our father, do we, is there any time that we, we don't talk to our parents or to people in our family? So this year, I encourage us, let's pray. You know, we can pray in our cars, we can pray, you know, we get up in the morning, we pray. Prayer is constant communication with God. And it's not that, it's like you, your generation or most of the young generation will say, it's not that deep. It's definitely not that deep. It's quite easy. Daily Bible reading, extremely important. We must read our Bibles because, you know, in Proverbs it says, okay, that people perish because of a lack of knowledge. I mean, um, Kingdom Community has put out, has recommended that we should do the U version um, um, one year Bible reading plan. I've read the Bible a number of times in one year, but I just thought that I was in the middle of, I, I was it somewhere, but I just thought, okay, let me do this one. Let me try it this year. And I've been so blessed by the videos. The videos explain so much about the Bible. And, you know, it's, like today, I think day seven, they were talking about I, um, Abraham sacrificing Isaac. And the way the commentary went, the way the video went, it was so graphic. I was blessed. I would definitely recommend it. And when you're doing something in a group, it helps you to be accountable to one another. Journaling. Journaling is extremely important because it's actually, as you write, it's as if, um, you know, it's a healing process. It's, you know, Cathartic in a way, it helps you, you know, and then whatever you write, you remember. Um, today, I, I picked up one of my journals from 2019, 
And I was really so blessed. I could feel, still feel the presence of God. So get yourself a journal. It doesn't have to be an expensive journal. I, for many years, I've been hooked to, okay, I must get my journals from Latana. And if I do, you know, but I have not been able to get one of those yet because I'm here, I'm not in Lagos. So I've got one of, you know, we all go to parties and they give us these jotters. Get one of those jotters and journal. Because as you journal, you know, you're able to write what you have learned and you're able to write what you think that, what you, the Holy Spirit has ministered to you. So that's, that's really good. Study the Bible, study the word. Studying the Bible is different from reading the word. You know, it's like for in university, if you wanted to study something, you know, if you, you went for your lectures, you'll read your notes. But if you want to study, you could, you would get the actual textbook and then you'll also make extra notes. I encourage everybody to have a, a physical study Bible. There are lots of them around, you know, the Spirit Field Life Bible, the Life Application Bible, there are various ones, invest. I know they're expensive now, but I think it's probably equivalent to the amount of money that people spend on data in one month. They, they range from about 15,000 to 20 something thousand about that. But invest in the study Bible. It, it will change your life. Fellowship. Let's fellowship with people. I know that some people is like, oh, church hurts this one, that one. But we cannot remove ourselves from the church of God or from the body of Christ. We must have people that we fellowship with, that we engage with. You know, um, Derek Prince said, you know, in terms of people looking at churches and saying that, oh, this church is this, this one is this. And he said, there's no perfect church. And even if there was, the minute you enter it, it ceases to be perfect because each of us is imperfect in different ways. So we have to cultivate a habit of listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit so so important praise and worship very important and you know having our music what is the music that you listen to what do you, what is in your environment take charge of your environment take charge of your atmosphere i think for those of us that are sensitive you will know when you get into an atmosphere that is warm that is welcoming and then you get into another atmosphere that it just seems as if mm -mm, what is going on here and we must be sensitive to our atmospheres. I think some of us have been so used to having a lot of noise in our background. We don't hear, we don't, we, we have too much noise. So our sensitivity is reduced. Let's check, take charge of our atmosphere. Play, you know, I, one of the instrumentals, one of the um, instrumental um, instrumentalists I love is Dapi Tiki's. He's so amazing. Put that in your background. Don't put the radio or something noisy. Some people, their visions are on virtually 24-7. Yes, CNN is 24-7, but that's not supposed to be dictating what is in your life, you know, and Yes, and then, you know, we have to, like, there's a lot out there. There's YouTube, there's, you know, there are a lot of messages that you can listen to. You get music, deliberately put on emotion with God. I hope you're still hearing me. Oh, dear. Yeah, so I was dragging, so I stopped your video, then it became stable. Let's watch it for a few seconds. Okay. Yeah, you can, at least you, I'm here. So you can leave my video off then for the time being. Thank you. Okay, so um, are you a spiritual thermometer or a thermostat? A thermometer measures the environmental temperature and says, oh, it's hot, it's cold. Nigeria is good, it's bad. Oh, this Nigeria will be good in Jesus' name. Da, 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 da. We are, oh, this person did this to me in the office. They're so hostile, they're so this. Or are you a thermostat? You get into that environment and you, you look at it and say, oh, it seems as if there's control and manipulation here. It seems as if some people here have anger management problems and I'm going to take authority over this environment. I'm going to regulate it. I'm going to fill it with the presence of God. One of the things that 
we had done in our departments. I mean, I'll just give you an example. Um, for many years, there used to be a lot of infighting and outfighting. You know how human beings can be, and there were a number of Christians there. So we decided to start a prayer thing, maybe on Mondays, like 30 minutes before office hours and pray concerning our departments. And over the years, I, I'm happy to say, and by the grace of God, we were able to regulate that environment. Now we are at peace with one another. And whenever we see anything that is coming up, we take authority, you know, we take authority over the environment. And, you know, we're able to, we have a stable environment. So in 2023, are you going to be a, um, a thermometer or a thermostat? The choice is yours. Ah, friends or foes, social media. We need to be careful. I mean, we, we are all on social media nowadays and I think sometimes there's so there's so much to learn from social media. Let me start with the positive. You know, I've talked about you version. I've, I've talked about um, YouTube, Instagram. I, I have there's so many messages that I I mean I'm blessed by and different people. And then you know, there's there are a lot of these things that are useful. But sometimes we spend so much time. I think I'd ask us to do an audit of how much time we spend on social media and how much time we spend on, on the, the word and spiritual things. This year, you know, the thing, it's important for us to manage our time well. Whatever you spend your time on, whatever you focus on ultimately controls you. You know, I mean, some years ago, I mean, I mean, a lot of young people were very excited about keeping in touch with the Kardashians. I mean, I know you look at the Kardashians, it's like, is that the, the social media influencers? Are those the ones that we want to be influenced by? You know, we have to be careful who influences us. We have to be careful how much time we spend on social media because it also affects your mood. If you keep on hearing a lot of bad news on Twitter, on CNN or various things, you find that you get depressed. So let's be able to regulate our time on this um, on these social media um, spaces. We can make them our friends, or we can make them our foes, or we can actually be both. So no. So how do we dispense the glory? We dispense the glory by loving people, by seeing people as well. You know. You know, you can be in somewhere and that's the other thing about social media. Sometimes we're so involved in our phones that when we get somewhere, we don't even pay attention. We don't pay attention to the people around us. I remember my cousin once, she was talking about a meeting that they had with women of influence and then some other younger women. And the younger women were busy on their phones and she had to say to them, you know what? Sitting beside you are captains of industries. You didn't engage with them. So we need to be able to, you know, put our phones down and, you know, engage with people, young, old, you know, let, let's be people that engage with people. Jesus did that. Look at how he went out of his way to um, talk to the woman at the well, touching people as well. Sometimes you might be beside someone and it's like, Lord, what do you have? What would you have me say to this person? I remember that um, I, there was a prayer meeting and I was sitting beside somebody or behind somebody. And I said, Lord, what would you have me say to this person? And um, he said, because she's in charge of the children's church. So afterwards, I went and I prayed with her. He said to me that I should tell her that, that he's very proud of her, what she's doing. And um, the way that he's raising up the children for the next generation and her labor is not in vain. And I gave her that word and I prayed with her and she was so blessed. So it, that's important. Listening to people is important as well. You know, people come, they talk to you. Sometimes they just want to vent, they just want to offload. So it's important and praying for them as well. Engaging with people one-on-one. -on -one. Um, I have a few examples. I remember was last year, 
I was going to Calabar, I think it was last year, June, after my sister's birthday. And I was at the airport and, you know, I was just, we were reminiscing about the birthday party. I was having fun, gisting with my sister and my cousins. And then apparently I missed the call for my flight to Calabar. So anyway, somewhere along the line, a young man came and he sat in front of me and said to me, are you going to Calabar? I said, yes. I said, okay. And he said, okay. He sat with me. Then after a while, he said to me, it seems as if they called the flight for Calabar. So we picked up our bags and we ran downstairs. And by the time we got there, they said, oh, your flight has been called and you can't get on the flight. <laughs> I was like, oh no, this can't happen. <laughs> My mother is not well, it can't happen. I was like, no, I must be on this flight. They said, come back tomorrow. I said, no. Then I just started, Jesus, Father, help me, help me. And I started praying in tongues. I said, God, I must get on this flight. <laughs> anyway, after all that drama, they said, okay, they contacted the um, the airline, the, the plane, and they said, oh, that we could come on the plane and they uh, gave us one of these Hilux um, um, jeeps that drove us to the plane. And then we got on the plane and lo and behold, myself and the young man were sitting beside each other. So I just started talking to him once we settled down and I asked him, what's your name, this, that, and then, you know, asked him what, he, you know, you know, I, I think we got into the conversation about God and everything. So he said, yes, yeah, so that actually has been seeking God. And then anyway, that the way he saw me at the airport, you know, when they said we couldn't get on the flight, that he already had his reservations at about Ibon Air. When they started, he, was, he had given up. But when he saw me praying, he started praying. <laughs> and then that he was so happy we got on the flight. So that gave me an opportunity to talk with him. And basically he had been seeking God. He's a Catholic. And um, long and short of the story, he got born again and filled with the Holy Spirit behind our COVID masks on the plane. I was like, yes, God is good, you know. And that was really good. It made the, the whole adventure so much more interesting. And then targeted evangelism. I and mean, we've, uh, we've been taught about treasure hunts, et cetera. Um, treasure hunt is not just for HTP. I'm talking to myself as well. It's also something that we can use after um, HTP. It's, it's a very important tool. Yes, so partnerships are also very important. We also, apart from being partnered with the Holy Spirit, we are partnered with other people, our family members. Um, this commission, we, we are commissioned with our family members. We can look at what we can do together with our family members, equip our family members also in prayer and also praying for others to be able to carry out the mission of discipling nations, our friends. We must have friends that share common goals and common values. If you're hanging out with people that say, oh, um, you know, all this Christianity doesn't work, it doesn't do this, they will influence you and they will influence you negatively. Hang out with people that will influence you positively and you can partner with to do different things. Like I have a partnership with some sisters. We pray online together. One is in the US, one is in um, the UK and I'm in Nigeria. We knew each other years ago. We've, we've been friends for um, over 30 years and reunited again. We are partnering to do different things together. And then KC Nations is a partnership and we can get involved. Our church community is also a place where we can partner with. Good people are our greatest assets. I, I think um, relationships is something that we, we also, we need to cultivate our friendships. We need, to, it's something that I, I will encourage a younger generation. And it's like, you're probably saying, ah, you keep on saying young people, young people. Well, it's because I'm getting older and older. I'm going to celebrate a major birthday soon, but I'm young at heart. But I find with this generation, sometimes we don't, um, the relationships are not cultivated. We, I think there's a tendency to think if I text people and that's enough, but we need to cultivate our relationships because even God says that human beings are treasures. You know, he says that um, in Exodus, he said that the Israelites were jewels. In Malachi, it also says that we are jewels, that those that spoke of the Lord often, he referred to them as their jewels, you know, and as we all know with jewels, there are different levels of jewels. You have, you know, diamonds, you have rubies, you have um, 
you have different gemstones, emeralds, etc. You have some that are not so expensive. I have my friends that are my diamonds. I have my friends that are, you know, that are so, they mean so much to me. Cultivate friendships, social capital. It are so, it's so important. Sometimes you might not have money, but you have friendships. They are our greatest assets. Let's make sure that even those that we've met before, we keep in touch with them. The people that are older, our uncles and our aunts, let's keep in touch with them, send them a message. It's their birthday, keep in touch. And that, you know, so that we can have, have that, keep that asset. Cultivate partnerships. What can you do together with people? What can you, you know, what can you do um, with your friendships? It's very important. Identify partners, identify co-laborers, mentors and mentees. Now in this, you, you need to identify people that are maybe older people that you, you admire and you know you would like to work with them. You'd like to, you know, fellowship with them. You'd like to even on a, on a, um, a circular level. I have a mentor, she's in her seventies. And, you know, as a, when I was going through my residency training, she became my mentor and we've maintained that relationship for over 30 years. And she's such a lovely woman. And, you know, sometimes with older people as well, for the young people, you feel, I don't know what I can give them. I'll give an example of one of my mentees and younger friends that's on this call that I mean, it was an interesting way that we met. And um, I'll save that story for another time. And, um, you know, we grew in a friendship. I have many, many young friends. I have, I, I, because I'm young at heart, I, and I think that's one of my, I definitely, that's one of my callings. And one day on a Sunday, she came to my house and she brought a loaf of bread. And for most people you'll think, what is a loaf of bread? And I think a loaf of bread at that time was about 300 naira, 350. That was an amazing gift because if that was breakfast for the following day, Monday. If she hadn't brought that bread, I might have been like, oh, what are we going to eat the following day? So for your older friends as well, it's still the new year. Find something, a nice gift, a book, something. Just say, yeah, have this. I remembered you. You've been such a blessing in my life. Then um, have um, your mentees as well. Have your peer, your peers that are your friends, people that you can run to and talk to. And even your older friends that you can talk to. It's like, look. I need to vent. I'm not happy. I need to, you to pray for me. I feel offended. I feel frustrated. Have those kind of people. Have role models that you look up to. So let's establish these relationships in the new year. I don't know whether you have them. If you don't have them, let's establish them. If you have them already, cultivate them. We are called to be in communities. We're not called to be lone rangers. There's something about this generation. There's something about the current time is that we feel we're all authorities about various things. It's my truth. It's my way of thinking about it. No, I mean, there's counsel in, in, um, in a group. In, that, in, in Proverbs, it talks about there's wisdom. In the, in the multitude of counselors, there is wisdom. So please, let's find relationships that are worthwhile, that can be a blessing to us. So who are we sent to? We need to identify our core group or our core groups. You know, we're sent to our family members. You know, we must pray for our family members. We, I mean, a lot of us are from dysfunctional families and that us includes me, you know. And, but when we have the spirit of Christ in us, we're able to, as it were, also disciple our families. I would talk about my mom. I mean, she, you know, when I got born again, years ago I, you know, I, I talked about being born again it's like what are you saying I was born in the Methodist months I grew up in the months I know the Bible I know this but to the praise and glory of God my mom is born again now she's reading the word and everything and then you know other our siblings our cousins we are sent to them we are sent to pray for them we're sent, sent to support them and counsel them then our friends if our friends are going through stuff and we're just like, oh, sorry, sorry. No, let's release the presence and the power of God upon their lives. Let them know that we are there for them. Our colleagues at work, we can pray for them. We can pray with them. 
people come to us and tell us about their problems, let's not leave them to go away like that. Let's ask them, can I pray for you? And quite often we'll get a word for them. Our employees or employers, we need to pray for them. Random people that we meet, we are sent to them. Send to young people, send to old people, send to different people. So I'll talk about the seven mountains briefly because all of us are, we are in one way or the other um, sent to these seven mountains. I think please, if you could just, I, I think I, 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 there was an exercise I wanted to do with the last slide. Just identify one group that you're sent to and kindly tap it and um, type it into the chat. So I'll be talking about the um, seven mountains. There's religion, family, government, education, media, arts and entertainment, business and economy. And each of us is sent to at least one of these seven mountains. For me, I'm a teacher, I'm a lecturer. I know that I'm sent to ed education. And then I'm sent to families, I'm sent to young people. I have a passion for young people. One of my, um, my friends says, you know, talks, has talked about it in the past because I gather young people wherever I go. I see a young person and I'm interested. She said, oh, I live in Ologueru, somewhere in my battle called Ologueru. She says, I'm the pipe piper of Ologueru. So I'm sent to family. Um, some of us are sent to media. Um, like Simi talked about last week, I was so excited when she was talking about essence and media. And I think for us older people, it's difficult for us to, you know, to think outside the box of medicine, engineering, law. And interestingly enough, my own children, my son is, is in I think media or is in entertainment. I think my, my daughter will probably be in, in media. And he has a passion for filmmaking, screenwriting. It, it took us time to be able to kind of like accept that. But then again, their father is in the creative arts. He's a music major. So I think we need to begin to embrace these other areas. And that's not to say that we are only in one particular area. We, there are different areas that we're in. Identify the mountain and go for that mountain. Prepare yourself for that mountain. People that are in the ministry, they are called to the mountain of religion. You know, it's very, very important that as we go into this year, we strategically position ourselves in these places that at any point in time, if the opportunity opens up or the Lord opens our eyes to see, we are available to enter into those places. And then once again, I'd like you to type in the chat, which mountain, which of these mountains or that you are, you feel that the Lord has called you into. So, um, yeah, so how do we put this all together in terms of nation building? I am very passionate about Nigeria. And I know that a lot of people are jackpying out of this country. Well, for those of us that are here and even the countries that you're in, God has called us to be carpenters and nation builders. And the, the word carpenter, I've gotten out of the, the scripture, Zechariah 121. And it says, then I said, what are these? Horns and smiths. Another translation says carpenters coming to do. And he said, these are the horns or the powers that scattered um, um, Judah so that no man could lift his head. But these smiths, sorry, it's a carpenter, the smiths and workmen, else, they're the carpenters, have come to terrorize them and cause them to be panic stricken, to cast out the, the horns or powers of the nations who have lifted their horn against the land of Judah to scatter it. Most of us, we definitely know that Nigeria, their horns, their, their assigned their, their powers, their territorial powers that have been sent to this nation to scatter it. But we are the carpenters. We are the craftsmen that can build up this nation again. Even like Bezalel and, uh, uh, and his partner that were sent to build the temple in um, Exodus. They were skilled craftsmen. There are a lot of us that are skilled craftsmen in different areas, in tech, in agriculture, in agrotech, in um, economics, in business. And we're going to build up this nation again and the nations that we're in. 
we are in Proverbs 24, 3, it says, wise people are builders. They build families, businesses, and communities. And through intelligence and insight, their enterprises are established and endure. So in this season, we are going to build enterprises that will be established and they will, be, they will endure. We will be wise craftsmen. So manifestation. Um, Romans 8, 19 says, the entire universe is standing on tiptoe, yearning to see the unveiling of God's glorious sons and daughters. That's what um, the TPT version says. And then Isaiah 6 said, also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go for us? Then I said, here am I, here I am, send me. How many of us will say to the Lord, here I am, send me. We are the sent ones. We are the commissioners. And we have been commissioned. We are commissioned with the Holy Spirit. We are commissioned with other people that God has put us in community with. These people can change over time, but we are on assignments on this earth. And let us not lag behind. Let us do what the Father has called us to do. A, a particular um, passage that I like that um, I, I unfortunately omitted from this, I would like to share it, is Galatians 2, um, 20. If anybody can find it in the TPT version, they can read it for me. Otherwise, I will, I will read it from, by myself. I've gotten it. It says, I have been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ um, lives in me. And the life which I now live, in the flesh. I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not, um, sorry, that's the KJV. I wanted the TPT. Excuse me on that. Yes. So my old identity has been co-crucified with Christ and no longer lives. Now, and now the essence of my new life is no longer mine. For the anointed one who lives in me, who lives through me, we live in union. My new life is empowered by the faith of the son of God who loves me so much that he gave himself for me, dispensing his life into mine. So Christ dispenses his life into mine. So what do I do with that life that he has dispensed into me? The onus is on us to dispense that life out to a generation that is darkened, to a generation that is crying out for the love of Abba. Thank you very much for listening. God bless you. Hey, you want to say something? I was like, wow, this is more like yeah. one hour of the dots. Prophet May just, <laughs> he just nailed the one hour discussion. Did you tell her your slides to one hour or what? <laughs> I was checking the time. I'm a teacher, so I have to go according to time. <laughs> Uh, yes. Thank you very much, Antema. Thank you. That was really beautiful. Um, you know, I was um, replying to Lainka in in the chat that yes, I mean, it's in the simplicity. It's not really that deep. The things that we ought to do, the the things that we have been called to do, and how to do them. You know, I think that sometimes you know, and I don't know if it's my it's like like towards the end of the year when everybody's like under pressure, you're feeling fried. And you feel like, oh, I need to do something huge. You know, it's in the simplicity, talking to someone, reading your Bible, having friends, partnership, you know, like talking to the Holy Spirit, asking him daily, like I, I have been commissioned. I want to just partner with you. What do you want me to do today? Yeah, very, very correct for like a simple daily steps. And I discovered that if we can just like, I have a simple daily step, you know, cumulatively in a year would have done a lot rather than waiting for that big thing. Like, no, 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 I'm caught to something. There's something big I'm doing. I have plans, great plans, you know, and then we never take those steps. I could imagine that if we read a, um, a verse of the scripture every day, for instance, as little as a verse, you know, you would have read like 365 verses, powerful 
verses of God's word, which is sharper than so just what and so I like changed our life. So yeah, Auntie, thank you so much. Happy New Year, Auntie Alara. I've seen you in the chat, you know. So thank you. I don't know if anybody have questions, um, comments. You know, I I am proud to say that Auntie Emma has lived this. I have known Auntie for a while. And you know, talking about community, I remember that most of the like um people you and Auntie Sable, relationships that you have had for years, praying and fellowship with the likes of Pastor Fulola Craig and all that so yeah I'm glad that this has remained consistent over the years and you have preached what you've practiced and that is very beautiful comments questions anybody now is the time to ask if you need to buy the KJV Bible or the TPT uh, yeah so Pastor Tim Parker yes <laughs> It's a good question. But say back, in fact, I'm bringing you up. And then maybe like I'll, I'll bring Antelera up to also comment. Pastor, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Good morning. When I heard from Lola Craig, that used to be my, I, in the, used to be, we used to be so close. We used to play together in the early years. So that just kind of became something. Thank you so much. That's been so powerful. Thank you. We're called to build communities, called to build enterprise, called to build families. So I'm here. Good morning. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. And to Lara, I'm asking you to unmute as well. Thank you for staying back here. Yes, we used to like have lunch and auntie actually have exotic places in but Auntie Emma used to take us to very lovely restaurants. See <laughs> you. You should come to Bado. Let's spoil you. Uh, <laughs> We're traveling all over the place that you don't go to yeah. African countries. We were in Kenya yesterday. Those places are not fine, you know. So, uh, we are rebuilding Ibado. <laughs> okay, Atalera, you have the floor. Good morning, man. Yes. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I mean, that was just... um. I'm one person that can call you Emma. So I thank God for that. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you for that wonderful teaching. You know, like it's like so many people have said the simplicity, but yet so elegantly presented and um, in a way that will remember you are a teacher. Because as I'm as I'm picturing some of the slides that I saw, I can remember the points that you raised. So God bless you for seeding in us um, a lot of valuable what I call nuggets of wisdom and um, and just sitting in us the desire to read the word I think God has been very intentional about saying get into the word get into the word and it really has been beautiful this week um, to do it and I'm saying God don't let busyness squash let's let, let don't let busyness squeeze out this time in the word and, and I just sort of released that prayer on every single one of us, that God will give us the grace and the wisdom. So thank you for doing what, laying a strong foundation for the rest of the year and drawing our attention to what truly matters, what really matters. And, and, and I don't know whether Auntie um, Imo made it, just know that she had yeah, she made sure that she told me to say, I am going to be there. So I want you to know that she's here with us in the spirit. Yes. <laughs> and I told her, I, re I confess that I released her and said, sis, if you can't make it, you can listen yeah. after. So we understand yeah. it's 4 a.m. for her or 5 a.m. Yes. So we do understand. But God bless you. And thank you so much thank for you. an excellent teaching moment. Thank yeah. you, Lero. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Payemi. Thank you, Taylor. All right. Um, yeah. I saw Kashukwe just now. Kashukwe, are you there? <laughs> Pio, I'm bringing <laughs> up Antelera's daughter. Kashukwe, I'm going to see you to and put on your video. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> and see, hi, mommy. I'm doing my hair. But I'm, I'm, I'm here. I, can't, I can't put on my video right now. But like, I've been here. I've listened. It was a wonderful word. What's a great way to start the year, like everybody has said, and I'm super proud of my mom. Um, like everything that everybody has said is correct. 
amazing teacher. Me and my cousin were listening, and when mommy said um, that she was looking at her time because oh she's a lecturer, and I'm like, there's so many lecturers that they don't, they're not even bothered about anybody else's time, but I'm so proud of her and like the way that she's considerate and really caring for everybody. And um, she's taking out her time to prepare for this. Like we even had, we were on the phone just before this meeting, and I I know how much effort she put into into this um, message. And yeah, amazing. Well done, mommy. I'm super proud of you. Oh, Thank well. you. <laughs> Auntie, is it here? Ah, okay, Mika. He's doing his media stuff. You know, it's a night. It's a night owl. I'll send him the recording. <laughs> That's fine. Thank you very much once again. I truly appreciate you you're taking time out to do this. And um, God bless you. I don't know if you have any question. Okay, Antelera, you have one request. Let me see. Um, Antelera, go ahead. Can you hear me? Yes. When we're talking about Ibado, I felt a sense that um, Emma, you should invite us to Ibado. Okay. That we should come and play with you. Okay, we will come by God's grace. Right. And Okoyemi can join virtually. <laughs> Thank you very much, Auntie. Thank you very uh, much. Yes. Much everyone. Agrees. Yes, yes. I don't know why. I'm actually, yeah. on a serious note, I'm not actually joking. As you were talking about the battle, there was a poll, and I'm not sure why. So just let's pay attention to that and see what it does with it. All right. Thank, thank you, you thank you yeah yeah i think that any yeah i'm going to i'm marking a major milestone birthday next month so I'll, yes I'll you. apparently it's your 60th on valentine's day happy birthday in advance and um, oh, it's going to be an amazing year yeah. on valentine's day oh my word okay enough said zip <laughs> Okay, so I'm bringing up um, Israel. Israel, I wanted to pray for Auntie Emma, and then we'll wrap this all up. Okay, maybe you have not said anything. Okay, I asked for you to talk first, though. It is Israel, no please hold it. Israel, please hold it. P.U., you, you're on spotlight. No, is, uh, is Israel even available to pray? He may be a walker, so... Oh, my goodness, yes, yes. So, um, I, I've been racking my head thinking of a question to ask, really, you know, when you're just, <sighs> I like to ask questions on, on the Saturday teaching moments. So, so like you say, it's, it's not that deep, but it's deep, right? Um, commissioning and commissioning, you know, when you talk about commission, who are you, who are you joining with on the mission, right? And, uh, you've been commissioned and how do who do you commission with? You've talked about friends, you've talked about communities, you've talked about um, workplaces, uh, uh, seven mountains and all, you know. I think the the uh, the, the the picking of the commissions is Holy Spirit driven, you know. He, um, he, he understands times and seasons, well, not he understands, he creates at times and seasons, you know, and, um, just understanding how how you you begin to commission with some people, you know, at work. Um, you know, you meet people at work. You meet people in the marketplace. You meet people in several different places in church as well. You know, how you identify and seeing that life is a journey. You know. Um, you journey from one place to another, live on, pick up another steam, journey in as well. You know, it's going to be very important to be sensitive to understand, you know, the the starts and the stops of those various journeys. Very, very important. Um, I was watching The Chosen the other day and I saw how a lot of people followed Jesus, you know, up to a certain place. And when Jesus told them, hey, guys, a time will come when you're going to be eating my flesh and drinking my blood. <laughs> Guess what? 5,000 people dropped off, you know. Yeah. And Jesus was okay with that. Yeah. He was okay with that. You know, we have to know, I mean, you've been 
journeying with friends for since childhood you've been friends and all that stuff there's a place where and i like what Ugo says in uh instagram and in uh whatsapp status or stories as well you know she makes it so clear that you come to a place where you just have to lift off and move on you know and um pick up new friends because you still have to keep commissioning as the place you mentioned about we shouldn't do life in isolation and that's so true you know but knowing exactly when to transition from friendships it's so key as well um having to carry uh well not carry is not the word having to just be traveling with the same people if it's the will of god it will happen you know and if it's god's will that's you know there are bus stops where one lifts off there's a layover you catch another flight and and you keep going because the, the destinations will always be different you know so i've been mulling in my head commissioning and commissioning you know who are these commissioners that one needs to be aware of you know so when they are like said to you you don't miss them you know they are very clear you 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 test them you know lord is this me something ugo posted in the chat here about um you look for those who will help you birth what's already inside of you you know and i'm like okay that's for you how about you helping to birth what's okay. inside of others right and so it's not just about us it's about others as well so the people that I'm called to bet something out of, they may not necessarily be my commissioners, but I'm in their lives at that point in time to help achieve that, you know, and they too, they're in my life to help achieve something in me, but we may not necessarily be commissioners or we may. I don't know if it makes sense. It, it's, it's a bit complex that I'm trying to think through watching season three of The Chosen and all the people Jesus was doing life with. You know, started with a guy called Nicodemus that should have been, you know, or dropped off at a particular place, you know, but still had his heart burning for him. You know, I like the way Jesus managed that transition so well. He just picked up, realized the guy wasn't coming with him and he, and he moved on, you know. He got on, saw another person and it's, it's I mean, there are, there are 8 billion people in this world. How do we do this? so-called uh work of the kingdom knowing there's transitions knowing there's full on and all i've got friends who i mean my investor friends with some of my best friendships that i've had looking back i can count them in my fingers those that have remained you know and we used to be extremely close very very close you know and so it's just being mindful of what God's saying and doing at any particular point in time and how should we be responsive to what he wants us to do and those who we should be commissions with. It's okay. I hope I haven't confused anybody though. So I, I just say something before we round up. Thank you, um, PU. I think that's just it. It's like there's that transition. We, we, we are commissioned with different people along the way. You know, I mean, I've, I've been to, I've attended different churches as well. And, you know, at a particular time, that was what was, what I needed. And even in terms of um, HTP and the Kingdom Nation, I think it's something that I had been yearning for for many years, because it's like the four walls of this church, it's done. I mean, it's not, it's not enough for me. And um, getting on board HTP was an amazing experience. I mean, there were some things that had been in me for some time. I was like, are you okay? But it became more solidified. And I, you know, I found some other people that I am um, commissioned with. And then even in the circular, there's some, there's a particular initiative that's on the way that my cousin brought me on board to develop a, an institution of academic excellence of research in Nigeria. So there you can be with different people at different times. I'm still in my church. I'm still with Casey. I'm doing these other circular things as well. But it's like you said, it's the Holy Spirit that will direct you. Sometimes people might say, come along like um, John Mark and um, Paul. And John Mark did the baby thing and he dropped him. They might drop, I've dropped him rather harshly. But then again, they came together after a while. 
So it's being able to recognize what you're commissioned to do at that time as well. Because sometimes things are too heavy. You know, you're just involved in so much activity. But the key to it, the central focal point is the Holy Spirit. Thank yeah, you. You're, you're, you're so right. I mean, there's that guy in scripture that Jesus had healed. And the guy was so excited. He told Jesus, anywhere you go, I'm going to go with you. Jesus says, no, it's not for you to come with me. You know, so he knew who he was to journey with, you know, at any point in time. And Jesus was okay having a Judas in his team. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> He, he was not insecure not to have a Judas. He knew who Judas was. He knew Judas was going to betray him, but he was comfortable with having a Judas in his team. So I guess it's 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 um it's down to Lord, what are you saying? What are you doing? And what should I be aware of? You know, so it's 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 not about the personalities, about what God wants to do, you know, because it might be a Judas in your team, but once he's supposed to be there, then He's got to be there because he has a role as well. Yeah. Thank you. Wow. Thank you very much. We copy you the first time. Please, so that was the right insight, and he didn't say it. I, I mean, when um when, at the point where um Professor Waji had mentioned the fact that um things that were in her that folks thought were weird, and then you got into the new space, did HTTP, and that was like. I felt, um, and that was like welcome, like you are in the midst of other weird folks. I felt like that was really profound because sometimes things can get stifled out if stifled, yes. If you are not in a place where it's been nurtured or people that actually think that way. And I merged it with the fact that sometimes you might say, oh, this is the kind of people that I like to flow with. That is different from what Jesus had done. And I saw that in what Pew had said that, if we could have a Judas, I quickly went through my mind to say that would I want to have, like I, Okwemi, as I stand right now, would I want to have a Judas? It's a no, I don't have it. Right now, I almost like unpick to say that this is the kind of person I won't deal. But, you know, I quickly did like a 180. I'm sure by the end of the today, I'm able to reach a 360 degree turn to say that, wow. And in practice, in, you know, in practice and in retrospect, I see some of the things that PU does now, you know, I'm like, okay, you're comfortable to have a Judas. At this point, I am not. And for Jesus's purposes, that was necessary. <sighs> That's like food for thought for me. I'm sure I'm going to sit on this for the whole year, you know, that how comfortable have I been, become to like partner with the Holy Spirit to say, I am. So PU, so if you look at I say yes to the will of God, and I still have those filters in my heart. My yes is not like total. No, it, your yes is total for the place, the situation where you are right now. You know, when he begins to call you to a higher place, you know, and we all have higher places. Everybody has, nobody's going to come to a point where he says, okay, I've achieved or I've attained, you know. When he begins to call you to a higher place, you find that your yes will now be insufficient. It, there will always be a gap because he's created that gap. You are here, he's called you higher. There's a gap already, you know. While you were where you were, it was okay. But the moment he calls you, you your whole spirit, body, soul will start feeling that there's a gap. You will know it. You will, everything about you will shift, you know, until that gap closes again. And the, where he's called you to is not going to change. We have to rise to where he's called us to and close that gap. Once we close that gap, everything just maintains equilibrium again. You know, so it is it is just walking on the spirit and understanding what's what is tilting us, what is making us uh um uh we don't feel enough, we don't feel satisfied with something. There's always a nudge, you know, always something pulling us for more. Let's not neglect that kind of pull, that kind of nudge. It's definitely Holy Spirit. Like we learned in HTTP, the very first thing you hear or sense is likely the Spirit of God. When we begin to second guess it, then we enter into the flesh, you know. But once we know it's the Lord, you try it, you test it, you got to move and close that gap immediately. Otherwise, you will always, and like scripture says, the Spirit of God does not always strive with man. 
mm. wants us higher and we and we neglect to rise higher with him he's not going to strive mm. he's just going to taper off and just leave you know until the residue inside of us begins to bubble again lord lord i need you i need more of you i need more of you then he comes yeah. again and says, that's that's that place is still there for you to attend to you know so we have to rise and be checking lord is there a gap that i need to close you, you know what do i need to close the gap you know and um for most times it will have been what he has told us already because he's never going to leave us without a witness you know he's going to tell you what you should be doing or should not be doing you know until we get back to that initial instruction things will just begin to to just gel i hope that's the picture makes sense yes it does be thank you because um what i had in mind before is i said you know what yes holy spirit but please don't bring me into that's okay yeah thank you <laughs> but the bible says that is the one that um puts in us the wheel and 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 the energy to do it so yes i, I think i quite get that thank you very much that was super super good and P, okay so now that you are here let's have you pray for auntie Emma. <laughs> and Timo is here. And is here. I checked earlier. So what? Okay. Why, why yeah. And Timo. Bless you guys. <laughs> okay, Lord, we just thank you for Prof. M. L. W. J. Just thank you for such an enriching teaching in commissioning and commissioning. Interestingly, I was reading a book on commissioning just this this week. I just thank you, Father, for, for newness. Thank you for a new vista as we come up higher to where you want us to be at all times, to know what weights to shed and to understand the things we have to put on and to be mindful that putting on the, the garments of Saul will not help us achieve to where you want us to be if we are David's. Mm. It is okay for Saul to wear those garments, but not okay for David's to wear those garments. So help us to understand what is what and which is which. We welcome your nudging. We welcome your filters. We welcome everything you're going to do in us to help us get into that space where we become. We become, Father, for we want to become, Lord. Bless Prof. Emma, who's brought this wonderful, complex yet simple message about attaining higher through commissioning and looking for folks to mission with. Bless her home, bless her husband, bless her family, her ministry, her job, her career. Bless her relationships that she so, so, so treasures and cultivates. Bless those relationships, Father. Bless the tip of her fingers, Lord. Do a new thing for her life, even in this new season that we've all entered into. We pray in Jesus' mighty name. And for everybody joining this call, Lord, open our eyes to see where you've called us into. We mentioned the seven mountains. Open our eyes to see our role in this Joel chapter two army that will not break ranks. Help us to understand what breaking of ranks even mean. Not just the literal word, but in through your own lens, Father. Help us to see all these things, Lord, that were a part of a large army. Help us, Father. For we will win this war. We will win the battle. We will push back the gates of hates and the church will overcome. The boldness the world has today to be front and center with all their lasciviousness and evil. Lord, we will overcome and subdue all of them. And Lord, in these days, according to Isaiah chapter 6, the Bible says, they that shall be of you shall rebuild the old waste places. All the people whom the enemy has stolen, they shall be the ones who will come back to rebuild the old waste places, Lord. And they shall build and raise up the foundations of many generations. We'll bless, Lord, Prof. M.A. for kick-starting this off. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 <clears throat> Thank you very much, Pierre. Thank you, everyone. Happy New Year. Next week, we'll be having um, a very um, special session. It's going to be like a workshop. It's going to be on visioning. We are having two powerful women. Oh, wow. um, ah, that's, that's Christiana Kayode. 
and Ajara, and we'll be designing our vision boards. And I think mm -hmm. that it's good that we have listened to this message now. So that during well, what the should they bring when they come on Saturday? What what, what should they bring? No. <clears throat> All right, Pierre. So um, immediately after today's um, teaching moment, we are pushing out. Um, Ajara and Chrissy already developed like a um a worksheet for people to go through before Saturday. So on Saturday, I think you will need that worksheet and your laptop and a few pictures that the Lord puts in your arts. Like now that we know what communications and what discussions we have with the Lord that as we are commissioned and commissioned, you know yourself, the seven mountain you are called into. So just look out for those com um, communications and then you just have to have like the picture dreaming with God kind of picture that you will need for Saturday. It's going to be very, very powerful. It's going to be most likely take out the old two hours but it will be an effective use of our time on Saturday. So watch out for the communication to be pushed out on all platforms. In Within an hour, it's, <clears throat> it's been ready for a few days, but we wanted to like announce that so that you know what to do with the material. So you'll have the workbooks so that you can answer some of the questions, read some of the contents, and then come with your laptop and some of the pictures. It doesn't have to be something fancy. You don't have to use Canva, um, having a PowerPoint you know, it's sufficient. And if you are very good with Microsoft Word as well, it's very good, you know. So I think that next week Saturday is for visioning and drawing up our vision board for the year. It promises to be an exciting year already. And I look forward yeah. to seeing everyone on Saturday. Amen. Thank you, P.U. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Prof. Have a great Saturday, everyone. Bless you. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye.